my resolution for this particular year is to learn at least one new language and i have started that i have started learning python i just wanted to share whatever i have learned today let's start off with some funny comic strip i just came across this particular funny comic strip in xkcd.com it just basically mocks python how it easy it is if you notice that a uh, guy one says you're flying how the other guy says python so i just learned it last night everything is so simple hello world is just print hello world i don't know dynamic type white space whatever come on join us programming is fun again it's a whole new world up here but how are you flying i just typed import anti gravity and that's it i also sampled everything in the medicine cabinet for comparison but i think this is the python it's just a funny meme i just wanted to share it because i just came across it and i found it a little bit funny but yeah it is very simple as it is said in this particular meme it is pretty simple if you are starting to learn programming then python is a good choice that's what people say i also i'm not sure about it but when i saw the initial part of python it is pretty simple i have just got the basics of python i'm just going to cover the these parts in this particular video the installation of python printing a hello world program variables strings lists and list functions let's learn python press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers the first one in the agenda is installation of python i have downloaded python and i have installed it already you can download it from python.org/downloads there is a version available for every os if you are using linux you can go ahead and download it for linux or windows or either for mac i have downloaded the 3.6.4 version i'm going to learn python 3.6.4 basically i'm going to learn python 3 plus python 2 is completely different from python 3 there are major differences that's what people say but i just wanted to learn the latest version so i have installed python 3.6.4 my mac already by default had 2.7 but uh, i'm going to use only 3.6 now how do we code for python there is a plugin in intellij if you are already using intellij you can use the intellij python plugin or if you are not using intellij and if you are a new developer you can go and install pycharm it is also provided by jetbrains it is exactly the same as intellij however it is specific for python development it is completely lightweight and it is extremely fast however if you are already using intellij idea for your java node or ui related stuff then you can install the python plugin like how i have done let's go ahead and create a small project inside intellij i have the python project here so in order to get this particular option you have to install the python plugin if you don't have the python plugin installed you will not get this particular option here in the create new projects window and you will be able to select the project sdk so i have the project 3.6.4 mentioned here i have added the sdk so by default intellij identified that there is a 3.6 version and it picked it up however if it is not identifying you can just create a new version and then say add local and then add your version of python there i'm just clicking the next option here i'm just going to say python um exam basics one let me maximize the window so that we don't have any disturbance and if you notice there is nothing here so the project got created there is no folder structure nothing so you can have your own folder structure for simplicity let's create a folder structure just for our coding preference i'm just going to create a source and if you notice here when i created the source it automatically created a python script called init.py but we don't want to do that let's create a new python file i'm going to create the python file as example 1 
the first thing which we wanted to see is the printing of hello world and let's try that so how to print hello world in python it's pretty simple like how we do system.out.println in java you can directly say print if you had worked on groovy you can do print same way with kotlin similar way you can do that in python like this so we can just say print hello world and let me run this particular file and if you notice here the hello world has popped up here the good thing about python is it is easy to learn and if you notice it ran so quickly so the ran running time for python was quick because it did not have much of the compile times like the java jvm let's understand the variables so how do we create variables variables can be directly created like this you can directly create a variable and assign some value you don't have to mention the data types you cannot have variables with spaces if you notice here IntelliJ is going to complain us and if you try to run it is going to complain saying invalid syntax so we cannot have variables with spaces however you can put variables with underscore and you can have variables with camel case as well now how do we manipulate variables right you can directly do that using you can do variable 1 plus variable 2 you can do additions you can do subtractions everything using this option so what do you think will happen here so i'm trying to add a string with a integer so what do you think will happen here let's try it out as expected the compiler is going to complain saying that integer and string cannot be concatenated however we know that there are some tricks which we use to use in java like how we used to use here that also won't work because there is no data type mentioned because by default whatever you assign that is created as a data type here so you cannot use spaces like this however you can merge two different data types which are string i'm just going to create a variable for you can you can merge it here you can add additional strings that would work as well see here it has worked so this is how you can create variables if you want to assign variables if you want to assign same values to multiple variables you can do that i can just say 5 equals variable 2 equals a you can do this let me run this yep if you notice here the tech primers got changed to hey so you can assign variables in such a way that you can directly do a equal to b equal to the value so this is how you can work with variables now how do we create strings and how do we work with strings we saw how we have created strings but let's see how do we work with strings we had the variable called variable 2 here imagine that this statement is not there i'll just assign a to variable 5 so now i need to work with the string tech primers i want to print only tech so what do i do i can do square braces 
mention from which index I want to do a substring and tell how many characters. So in our case, one, two, three, four, I want to display four characters. So this is going to display tech. So I'm just saying substring and let's print it. Notice here the substring got printed. So this way you can filter out these strings using the square braces option. So this is called slicing. So you can slice a string using the square braces. So now let's do a, another substring. However, in this case, I want to print primers. I want to print from primers till the end. So I want to print whatever is there after H till the end. So I can just say one, two, three, four. So I'm going to say that print me from the fourth element. So zero, one, two, three from primers. So, and I don't want the end because I don't know the end. So let's see what happens now. So the primers get printed because I wanted to slice from the fourth element till the end. Similar to how we did the slicing from the zeroth element till the length as four. Here we didn't use the length. So we did not give the length. And Python prints the string till the end. So this is how you can do slicing inside a string. The next in the list is lists. How do we create lists? Let's say I'm going to create a name list. Similar to how we created the variables, you can create the list like this. I'm going to say Peter, Sam, Ryan, and Adam. This is how we can create a name list and let's print it right just for our simplicity i'm just printing it and this gets printed like this so how do i print a specific person or a specific index you can directly do this so this is going to print adam because he is in the fourth index basically the third index the fourth element similar to how we have in other languages the index starts from zero we are using three here to print adam if I want to count how many elements are there in this particular length, there is a method called length which we can use to get the length of the list. So we can use the length method and we can get the length of the list. So notice here we have got the length of the list as 4. Imagine I want to change the name of Peter. To something else I can do that by using name list of 0 equals Chris and let me print the list now See here, the Peter's name has been replaced with Chris. You can directly change an index in this way. If I don't want to change Peter, however I want to change Ryan, I can do this. And it will change Ryan to Chris. See that Ryan has got changed to Chris. So this way you can change values in the list. Let's say I want to delete some values from the list. So how do I do that? So in order to do a delete, we have a delete operation delete is an operation which you can perform on a list so i'm just going to say del name list so you can delete on a name list del is a keyword which is used inside python so we can say del name list and provide what index do we need to delete so let's imagine i want to delete the first index this command will delete it and let's print what is happening inside the list so if i print this see that Peter got deleted and we have the rest of the names. Now if I want to print the length of the name list, I can do that. This should return 3 and we get 3 here. So this way we can delete the names from a list or an index from a list. How do I find 
maximum and minimum from a list so we created a name list however let's say if we have a age list we have ages of different people so for peter let's say the age is 30 for sam let's say it is 42 for ryan let's say it is 18 and for adam let's say it is 60 so how do we find the minimum so there are methods similar to how we had the length method we have the minimum method so we can find out the minimum of ageless we can assign this to a variable here and then we can print that as well or if you want to print directly you can just say print for simplicity and for ease of use i can directly say print max age list so let's run this so this is going to return the minimum age in the list and the maximum age in the list see that the minimum age is 18 and the maximum age is 60. this way we can identify what is the min and max in the list there is also an option to identify duplicates or the number of occurrences in a list let's imagine the list contains one more value for 18. there is an option called count so we can do a age list dot count and pass what is the value which we want to identify so i'm just passing 18 this will return the number of occurrences of 18 in the list notice here we have got the value 2 if i just say 30 this is going to return only 1 so this way you can identify the number of occurrences from a list so these are different list functions which are available inside the list so those are the basic stuff which i wanted to cover in this particular video i hope you guys understood the first thing which we saw was the variable how do we create variables this is how we create variables we can assign the variables without even having to mention the data type you can assign values to the variables we can do a print so print is similar to system.arc.println in java you can do a print variables add variables delete variables add variables you can subtract variables as well i have not shown the subtract option but you can do that you can do division multiplication we can also do concatenation if it is a string if you just say addition and if you do the string it does a concatenation the other good thing about the strings are slicing so you can do slicing of a string by mentioning this so you can mention the index of where the slicing should start and where it should end so this is nothing but the length of the characters it should end at and this is the index where it should start at if you don't know the length of the string you can make it empty and it will end till the length or the end of the string list can be mentioned using the array format they can be extracted by mentioning the index and if you want to find out the length of the array you can do the length if you want to delete an element from the array you can do a delete if you want to find the minimum and maximum of an integer array you can use the min and max functions if you want to identify duplicates from an array you can use the count so you can identify the occurrences the number of occurrences from an array using the count so this is how lists work inside python i hope you guys learned the basics of python let's learn more concepts in the next video meet you again in the next video thank you very much